Hello, Lone Puppy here. Uh, welcome to Star Made. I haven't made a video for a while, so let's get stuck in. This is, this is a demo project um, that I built to demonstrate um, something I came up with a wee while ago. Um, I built a universal lock mechanism with password access uh, using the the new display module functions in SensorLogic. Um, I was inspired to build this uh, for my PVP station and ships on a server I was playing on at the time. I built it to make it easy to copy paste into new existing builds, new or existing builds, and um, and I thought, well, maybe I could offer it to the community. They they might find it useful, and. Uh, they can pick it apart and use pieces of it for themselves. Now, um, it's designed in a way that you can use it to control anything that requires logic to turn on and off. So you can use it to control doors, elevators, um, basically anything really, lights, whatever you want. Um, and without entering the correct code, uh, it won't work. Um, until you do, of course. Now, in this example, I'm using it to control a door. I have three examples here. Um, one, as you would see it, in one of my structures, and another cutaway version of the same layout with uh, the logic exploded out to view it easier. And then I've got a simple basic block layout as I, as I would use it to copy paste into my designs. Um, by the way, um, I will upload this to starmade.net for download if you want to play it or apply it to your own builds. Now let's play. Right. Now if we go down here, I'll give a quick demo on how the thing works. So basically, I have a code that opens and closes this um, rail door. Now, without the code, it's locked. So every time I press the button to open it, it's locked. Now I use um, activation blocks for my doors because I want it to be uh, to signify whether it's active or inactive or open or closed. So when the button is on it should be open, when it's off it's closed. Now I'm using a button to send my data entry back to the controller that either allows or disallows the door to open. These lights, the red and the green lights, indicate whether the door is locked or unlocked and what I will do is demonstrate the display module and how it displays right um, Right now, so I will type in an incorrect entry into the display module. Let's go back down here. So I'm in astronaut mode. There's my little astronaut guy. Let's enter a code. Let's try wrong. Okay, that's actually not the code as you might guess. So I'll push the button to send that to the controller. Controller is analyzing, sorry. Authorization not allowed because it's the wrong code. Now if I enter the correct code, which is really tricky. It's one, two, three. You would never have thought that, would you? Now if I enter this code, unlocked. The lights go green, the red ones go off. Push the button, 
door opens. Ta-da! And push the button, door closes. So I can just magically make the door open and close. Now these, this control panel here has the same functions on this side, but the, this button and this display module are connected and they're not connected to the button and display module on the other side, so they're independent of each other. So if I, anyway, if I press this button, I have not entered a code and therefore it locks and closes the door. So let's see, I'll enter the code once again, one, two, three. As you can see, there's nothing on that side. So send the code through both panels will display the necessary information and we can open the door. Likewise if I put in the wrong code both panels will display the information as well. See analyzing locked. So to set the code I have this block up here. Now normally you would actually enter a code that say uses password and one two three so you can't actually see it so if you have someone visiting or whatever they can't see what code you're typing or what code is set nor will they see what you're typing because you know naturally you don't see it so if i type in password one two three oops okay see can't see anything Hit the button, voila, door is unlocked. Now for this example I've actually also um, built in a instant lock button into the, uh, the whole thing. So if you hit that, it just locks it. So you don't have to mess around with anything. You just can straight away lock it. And this is useful if you've got um, an airlock scenario where you've got an outer set of doors and an inner set of doors. Um, naturally you can't run in there and reset the door. I mean you could, but rather than waste time going in there you just push this button and it resets. So it's basically just a reset button, but I've labelled it manual override. Now let's go and have a look at the whole thing in a broken out version. This is the same hallway, but I have made all this glass or crystal so you can see through it. So if I enter the code, one, two, three, okay. The door is now unlocked. Push the button, door opens. Same as before. Come down here. Now you can see down the bottom here, now that I've exposed all the logic, this is the um, display box that actually does the comparison with the preset code. So this display box is populated by these two buttons because they're, you know, they have these display modules next to them. So these two buttons will populate this display box and then the circuit will use that display box and that display box to, to do the check. Now I've got a faction block up here so if you're using it in a, in a station, faction ship or whatever, only a faction member of whatever rank can um, set the code. Um, this display block here is just an example of what you see on the screens over there. It's not actually, it wasn't originally part of the design but I added it into this example just so that, well it's just convenient really, you can see what's going on, see if I lock it, see it's now locked and everything down here is reset. So let's go around the back here, now this is the logic, this is the actual logic itself compact, I've compacted it down and I've built it this way so that it's uh, just a small uh, 2 by 4 by 3 block um, I'm guessing that if you wanted to you can make it smaller but I did it this way just for um, 
mental sanity really and uh, I thought also that I could build doors into my examples so you could build an access panel here to, to um, give you access to the back panel which I have actually done in my station um, so that I can come in here and I can actually change these to say something else you can configure them to say what you like I just put those there for simplicity um, down here is a, a wee bit of an instruction on where the inputs and outputs are um, that top one there this is um, the reset to, to reset the locks which subsequently closes the door and changes everything back to its default and this activation block is the output to the AND block for whatever load you have, in this case being a rail door, but it could just simply be a light if you wanted, or it could actually be, that could be controlling um, just ordinary flex doors, um, which it does in my station actually, I, don't, I didn't bother with rail doors. And this button here is the input so when, and that triggers the um, the sensor block to begin analysis of the the two display blocks, and what that does, uh, that's triggered by these guys. So, oh yeah, just a, a wee tip. What I've done is I've added in a de delay block. So, if you have some sort of fancy mechanisms that need some sort of elaborate mechanical movement, you can, in, in, in the case of this sliding door, you can put in delay blocks, as many as you like, to compensate for that, and then it will send the signal back to here and start processing the, the code. So if we go back to the exploded version, here it is. You can see all the pipes, and it makes it easier for you to basically see what's connected to what. See, that's not connected to anything, but um, so we go back to here. This triggers sensor block. Sensor block compares, and the sensor block compares that display block with that display block, and then once that has been triggered. The, this will then send the necessary um, logic controls to these AND blocks and the AND will trigger this button but only that is on let's see otherwise it will do nothing and then once it triggers this one it sends the information from this display block to these two display blocks, oh, and this one down here, which I added in later, um, and then of course it carries on the, basically it starts analyzing, has a brief delay, just so I can have that analyzing appear on the screen for a wee while, then it hits this delay block, and that, de that delay block um, will trigger Changing the display to locked. Just check that. That one, that one. Oh yeah, that's the reset. But that doesn't that doesn't actually do anything. Unless the logic over there is correct, I think. Anyway, 
Um, so once it fits that, it then sends that code to there. But if this that's right, this this is activated if the match is correct. So if it's not, then it will just say locked. So it goes back to locked. But if that is on, it will trigger that to go off, which prevents that from activating, which prevents that from going through the analyze and lock. And it turns this on to then delay, come to here, and then it unlocks. And the unlock code sent to the display box. Here and there, which then in turn, oh yeah, the, the lock mechanism also triggers the area activation block to allow the load to work, and that turns the green lights on, and this one being the not turns the red lights. So that controls the red lights. So that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully I haven't been too babbly about this, but yeah, if you want to download it and play with it, be my guest. Um, if you come up with any improvements, please let me know. Because um, I'm always open to improving my own stuff. If someone else comes up with a better idea. Um, here is the block, the basic logic block, so you can copy paste that. Um, just a hint, if you do copy paste, these, um, well, I don't know if it's fixed and going to be fixed in the new update, but these uh, display blocks, they show information on the screen, but if you save the entity as blueprint, and then you spawn the blueprint again, all this information is gone. A simple way around that I found is to just edit the block, um, use the right arrow key so that it changes it, and then click OK. And you, you do that on every display block, and it maintains whatever information is on the screen. Otherwise, you could just change it to whatever you like. Like you could say, instead of saying authorization accepted, you can say welcome and unlocked or access granted, whatever you like. Um, yeah, so uh, all this little bit here is just my, it's just an example of switching something on and off. This button next to the AND and the AND block is what turns whatever you want on and off as long as the, the lock is unlocked. If it is locked by entering the wrong code, it goes red. So you can you can follow the logic f from this little cluster here a lot easier than probably the rest of it. But it gives you an example as to what you can do with it. And that's my demo. So I hope you find it useful. Thank you for watching.